Well, good day, everyone. This is Jerry from Rhapsody Tours. In past posts, we had visited other areas of Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, and the northern half of the mainland. To begin your journey through the southern half of Nova Scotia, you will travel the Gloose Cap Trail and look back on time. Now, I do not mean the last 10,000 years with stories of the First Nations, or the last few hundred years with the introduction of the Europeans, but way back to the Coal Age, which began about 250 million years ago and lasted, oh, some 35 million years. Magnificent exposed layers of rock reveal the world's most complete fossil record of life in the Coal Age. That is when lush forests covered the area known as Joggins and much of the world tropics. The swamp forests produced massive quantities of organic material that, over millions of years, created the coal deposits for which this period of history is named. Embedded in 15 kilometers of accessible coastal cliffs, rare fossils reveal the details of life during that age. This is a wonderful vacation spot for amateur archaeologists and fossil hunters. Okay, a moment ago I mentioned First Nations. Maybe I should explain where the term Gloose Cap comes from. The Mi'kmaq, or Mi'kmaq Indians, have a legend of a mythical hero god named Gloose Cap. It was a meeting between Gloose Cap and the mighty whale that created the awesome tides of the Bay of Fundy. But we'll talk a little more about that later. Not far from Joggins is Spring Hill, which is the birthplace of the world-renowned singer Anne Murray. Now to continue your journey, you have a choice of two routes to take. Drive to just outside of Halifax and take the Annapolis Valley exit, or cross country to Windsor. Now if you're a hockey fan, Windsor is very important. Around the 1800s, boys from Canada's first college, King's College School, adapted the exciting field game of Irish hurling to ice on one of their favorite skating ponds and originated a new winter game, ice hurling. Over a period of decades, ice hurling gradually developed into ice hockey. Also, if you're a pumpkin fan, not far from here is the home of the late Howard Dill, the undisputed king of competitive pumpkin growing, whose garb produced orange monsters up to 600 kilograms, or 1,400 pounds. Further up the highway is the community of Grand Pré, a French name that translates to Great Meadow. It was founded by Acadian settlers. Although this region has seen many turbulent times, the settlement grew and developed great expanses of tidal marsh into productive farmland. This was done using a very unique system of dikes to wash the salt water out of the marsh. During the French and Indian War, the Acadians were expelled from Grand Pré during what was known as the Bay of Fundy Campaign in 1755. After the deportation of the Acadians, vacant lands were resettled by New England planters and in 1760 was renamed Horton. As a side note, one of the planter descendants was Sir Robert Laird Borden, the eighth Prime Minister of Canada who was born in Grand Pré in 1854. The community was made famous by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, Evangeline, and is today home to Grand Pré National Historic Site. If you are a connoisseur of wines, you will have the opportunity to sample some of Nova Scotia's best. There are a number of vineyards through the Annapolis Valley. As you want your way through the valley, you will see orchards and vineyards rolling across acre after picture-perfect acre, reaching out to the shores of the Minas Basin and the Bay of Fundy. En route, you can visit the communities of Wolfville, New Minas, Kentville, Bridgetown. By the names, you can tell there is a strong British heritage. You'll understand the lure as you tour the charming Victorian towns and explore the overflowing farm markets and the incomparable scenery. Travel to Port Royal, the original French settlement and capital of the colony of Acadia, founded by Samuel de Champlain. It was located there from 1605 until its destruction by British forces in 1613. This settlement was rebuilt into a historic replica in 1939 to 1941 by the government of Canada and is called Port Royal National Historic Site of Canada. 
carry on through Annapolis Royal, and then Digby. Digby had become world famous due to its fishing industry. More specifically, its scallop industry. I have seen Digby scallops featured on fine restaurant menus in Los Angeles, New York, and Paris. But you don't have to travel to any of these fine cities to sample this amazing seafood. Just drop into the Fundy restaurant in Digby to enjoy the freshest scallops you'll ever taste. The Bay of Fundy was Canada's only nominee to become one of the new Seven Wonders of Nature and rounds out the reasons for the Maritimes making the top ten list. The Bay of Fundy is an extraordinary spot to watch Finn, Humpback, and the endangered North Atlantic right whales swim through the world's highest tides to feed and play. A half-hour drive along the Digby Neck and a short ferry ride will bring you to Tiverton, where you can join the Pirate Cove whale watching tours for a thrill of a lifetime. Ten billion tons of water move in and out of Canada's Bay of Fundy twice a day. This has created a remarkable and unique seascape between Nova Scotia and the neighboring province of New Brunswick. The Bay of Fundy tide is five times higher than the Atlantic coast average, with its tides ranging from 3.5 meters, or 11 feet, to an incredible 16 meters, or 53 feet. This natural phenomenon provides opportunities to explore the landscape, ocean floor, and the abundant marine life. Now at the southern tip of Nova Scotia is Yarmouth. It is thought that the first European on North American shores, Leif Erikson, may have visited Yarmouth over a thousand years ago. This story is based on a ruic stone that was found at a nearby village. It is interpreted by some to have been carved by Erikson while others feel the markings are natural scratches that have been gradually enhanced over the years. Years later, Yarmouth did become very famous for its shipbuilding. A short drive up the road is the community of Pubnico, the oldest Acadian community in the world. Now, if you're in the mood for a real treat, stop at the Red Cap Restaurant and Motel for a traditional Acadian meal, Rappy Pie. It is delicious and my mouth is now watering just thinking of it. As you continue east, you'll notice a dramatic change in the terrain. The vegetation will become sparse and the coastline will become rocky and rugged. You are now on the lighthouse route and will journey through unforgettable landscape of coastal beauty and historic charm that has captured the hearts and the mind of travelers for generations. You will discover historic towns and weathered fishing villages where legends of the sea come alive. You can visit the communities of Shelburne, Lockport, Liverpool and Bridgewater, all areas very famous for pirates and privateers. Follow the coast to Lunenburg where the original inhabitants were mostly Germans from the southern Rhineland, Swiss and French Protestants from Montbéliade. This is another community with a long history of building wooden ships. The most famous is the schooner Blue Nose, which is depicted on the back of the Canadian dime or ten cent piece, and her daughter, the Blue Nose II, which remains a very important tourist attraction. In 1995, Lunenburg was declared a World Heritage Site. Mahone Bay has become an iconic image of Nova Scotia with pictures of its three prominent churches from across the harbour, frequently photographed and featured on postcards and calendars. And then there is Chester, a beautiful little village with two natural harbours, Front Harbour on the east and Back Harbour on the west. Scenes for several films, miniseries, movies of the week, television shows have been shot in and around Chester. Today we end at the prime attraction on the Lighthouse Trail Scenic Drive, Peggy's Cove. It was likely named after St. Margaret's Bay, Peggy being a nickname for Margaret, which Samuel de Champlain named after his mother, Margarita. The village was formally founded in 1811 and today has a population of approximately 46 residents. Thousands of visitors, artists and photographers flock to Peggy's Cove for images of its polished rocks and iconic lighthouse. Okay, we'll stop here. 
In the future, I'm going to be posting posts, blogs, and podcasts in three different categories. I'll be doing ongoing written blog posts, reviews, and updates. I'll be doing a weekly blog post with an audio feed, and about every two weeks, I will do a video podcast. In the next few weeks, I'll be posting the itinerary for the upcoming video podcasts. If you have any questions or comments about Nova Scotia, or anywhere else in Canada for that matter, or information on must-sees or do's you feel we should share, let us know, and we'll see if we can work them into the podcast. To ensure you don't miss any of the blogs, posts, or podcasts, visit us at www.rhapsodytours.net and click on the Discover Canada link on the homepage and subscribe to the blog. You can also find us on Facebook at the Discover Canada page or on Twitter at Rhapsody Tours. Well, that's it for today. In our next video podcast, we'll look at the capital city of Nova Scotia, Halifax. Until then, have a wonderful day. The Traveling Kilt Podcasts are a division of RhapsodyTours.net.